Notice, this video was made before Player Core 2 came out for Pathfinder 2e and so uses some class options from the original Pathfinder 2 Core rulebook. Hello YouTube and welcome to Cy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. Alright, welcome to part 2 of how to build an anime style swordsman in Pathfinder 2e. If you missed part 1, here's a quick catch up. I'm a weeb. I want to build anime style swordsman in Pathfinder 2e. What do I mean by anime style swordsman? Well, I have three criteria. They have to use a katana or katana-like weapon, have to be unarmored, and have to be able to do well in frontline combat. I know this technically discounts some fan favorites like Guts from Berserk. I have nothing against those characters. It's just not the vibe I'm going for for these builds. Got it? Okay, let's move on. In part one, we built a monk who uses an elven curve blade, which I counted as close enough to a katana. But some of you may be unsatisfied with that, so let's move on to a build that uses actual katanas. Now, warning, this is the most general of the three builds, so there are a million ways you can tweak it. If I didn't mention the tweak you thought of here, I probably just didn't have the time. Alright, let's get started. As always, when building a character, we start with the ABCs of character creation, and A stands for Ancestry, and that's basically going to be the beginning and end of this build. See, this build really relies on only one trick. The trick is that there is this one ability that four Ancestries have that basically turns their bodies into the equivalent of breastplate armor. Now, there are slight variations on this ability, but all of these abilities turn your character's body into a medium armor that provides a plus four item bonus to AC, a plus one max dex, an armor penalty of negative two, speed reduction of five feet. You can mitigate these downsides with a strength bonus of plus three, and they all essentially have the comfort trait, meaning you can sleep in your torso without getting fatigued. The four ancestries that get this ability are the Nagaji, who are snake people, Kashrishi, who are rhino people, automatons, who are robots with souls, and Kanrasu, who are shards of cosmic consciousness who grow their own bodies made out of wood. Two of these ancestries, the Kanrasu and the Nagaji, have this ability as a heritage, and two, the automaton and the Kashrishi, have it as a first level ancestry feat. Just use the ability that gets you the armored body, whatever it's called, and as for the remaining ability, whether it be Heritage or Ancestry feat, pick your favorite. But wait, there's more! Player Core 1 allows for an optional rule where you can turn any Ancestry into a versatile Heritage. You simply take an Ancestry as a base Ancestry, let's say Human, then you take another Ancestry, let's say Automaton. Then, for your Heritage, you choose Custom Mixed Heritage and choose the other Ancestry. So in our example, our Human would have the Ancestry Custom Mixed Heritage Automaton. You gain the traits of the second ancestry, so in our case Construct and Automaton. Important note, you only gain the traits, not the associated immunities or resistances. You also gain the ability to grab the second ancestry's ancestry feats. You may also gain low light vision. Now, you can use that first level ancestry feat to pick up the armored body ancestry feat, which for automatons is called Reinforced Chassis. Now, this is an optional rule, so talk to your GM before doing it, but in this way you could maybe, say, make a human that maybe has so many replacement prosthetics that they count as part automaton. However you do it, you are going to want your ancestry boosts to go to strength and constitution. At this point, I could probably stop the video. You know the rest. Just grab a martial class and pick up a katana. But for the sake of completeness, let's finish this up. B is for background, and just like the elf video, you can pick your favorite. Although we will want to grab us a bonus to Strength and Constitution. Since we went with Martial Disciple last time, I'm going to go with Raised by Belief for the deity Shizuru, Goddess of Swordplay, especially Katana-based swordplay. I'll throw up what the background gives a player on screen here. C is for Class, and at this point you can basically choose any Strength-based Martial class that gets Medium Armor proficiency. Barbarian, Champion, maybe a Magus if you want to throw some magic in there. For my money, the two to consider are Fighter and Ranger. Fighter can get you a bunch of solid basic combat abilities and makes you the theoretical best swordsman in the game because you can get up to Legendary with your katana. On the other hand, Ranger can grab you some very anime-esque feats such as Quick Draw and that level 6 feat Skirmisher Strike which lets you step and then strike or vice versa as a single action. This lets us do that fun anime thing where you move past somebody and strike them down in a single motion. In either case, both Ranger and Fighter have options for two-weapon fighting if you want to be that guy who wields a katana in one hand and a wakazashi in the other. Either way, choose whichever class and skills speak to you. Just remember to up your strength. 
Lastly, we get four free attribute boosts. Let's bring our strength up to plus four, dex to plus one, con to plus three, and then plus one to any mental ability score you want, your choice. Then all you have to do is pick up your katana and you're good to go. Now, is this the most broken build in the game? No, of course not. You won't be wearing full plate, so your armor isn't going to be maxed out, but it's certainly competitive with other frontline fighters. Maybe consider grabbing a Dusty Rose Prism Aeon Stone for that free shield spell that you can throw up if you have an action to spare. But listen, I know what you're going to say. You don't want this build. You don't want to be part robot or part rhino person or even a whole rhino samurai. Maybe your GM is disallowing those uncommon and rare ancestries. You want a full human wielding an actual katana. Well, yeah, we can do that. In part three... If you like this channel and want to see it grow, please like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube that you want to see more of my kind of content. Until then, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming.